And the whole goal of these classes, the content creators and the social media mastermind is to help you all be more successful. So EXP itself is more successful. And we hope that in a small way, we are here to help you do that. All right. Well, Okay, thank you, Beth Allen. Thank you, Jaime, for holding it down. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Social Media Mastermind. My name is Jerome Lewis. I am your host for today, and you just heard from Beth Allen. So um, what I was trying to do was I was trying to stream, but I'm not having the best experience with that. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So what I'm about to do now is I'm going to share my screen, and I need you to let me know if you can see my screen. You should see a big blue screen on the very left. There are going to be two presentations today. You're going to get a quick, brief presentation from me. Then you're going to get the overall presentation from Jaime. So do me a favor. In the chat box, please type yes if you can see that blue screen on the left. All right. Perfect. Thank you. And, and the way our, the, my classes works is generally we need at least 50 percent engagement to proceed. So I need a couple more yeses in that chat and we can get started. All right. Perfect. 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 Thank you. So welcome to the social media mastermind. We have this class every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time here in the EXP World Productivity Center. All right. Today, I am your host. Just a little bit about me. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I like to call myself a silly and serious millennial. Uh, Beth Ellen gave me this term, this moniker, right? She calls me a technologist. That means I'm pretty good with technology, so I can help you figure out some of that technical stuff. I'm also an introvert, so I like to bring that up for people that identify with being an introvert. Then uh, I'm an international speaker, and I'm also a author, right? So I published a book thanks to Beth Ellen. She inspired me to publish a book really quickly, just so you understand. And this is why me and Beth Ellen work well together, right? We got different behaviors and different personalities, right? So I told you a little bit about me as a person, my personality personality but we also have like business behaviors and business profiles right business uh, behaviors and i like this a lot because we use it here in exp and it's just one of my favorite assessments to use to understand people and business right so me according to this i'm a high d high c high d means uh, i'm very results oriented and high c means i'm very detailed put those two together that makes me an implementer right so i'm really good at implementation i'm also good at helping you implement right so you'll hear hear that from me from time to time i'm about helping you get results for your business i also run a marketing agency and if you want to learn more about me visit jerome lewis.com uh, beth Allen showed this last class we both won in tandem exp instructors of the year so this i just like to flaunt that sometimes i really appreciate everybody that comes in and all of the feedback that we get from everybody it helps us improve and bring you more value so that feedback goes a long way next this is uh the social media mastermind we have a rotating schedule and the way that schedule works is like this week one we do marketing concepts right so we did i think we did fishing for leads from facebook like the first week of this month week two we do facebook marketing week three we do video marketing so last week nick niehaus came in and he showed us like some tips on how to use video in our business and then week four which is this week you're going to hear from jaime jaime resendez he's a youtuber right and not only him not only is it he himself that uses youtube but he has clients and he teaches you right a lot of times people get lost and caught up in the vanity matrix how many views am i going to get and that doesn't matter jaime is here to teach you how to get business from youtube right and the views and all that other stuff that people are worried about that comes secondary right so that's one of the things that i appreciate about jaime there's a lot of content a lot of stuff out there about youtube how to get views how to be popular and we're here for business right so if you're here to get business using youtube you're in the right spot and then whenever we have a week five and this month we have a week five we do an open workshop or open questions and answers and next week beth Ellen is going to teach you about beth Ellen. you want to tell them what we're going to learn about next week Beth Ellen, you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, my mic isn't working. Okay. So I got to meet some LinkedIn creator influencers. And then my son met a YouTube um, person, uh, a venture fund that funds YouTube who knows Google. So these are two inside people. I'm not an engineer and don't work for Google but or LinkedIn, but these people do. And they shared with me 
how the algorithm works. Some is surprising, some we all know. And so next week, I'm only gonna take 20 minutes of your time, but I'm gonna share what they told me. That's it. Thank you, Beth Ellen. So uh, do me a favor in the chat. Again, I need at least 50% engagement. Type yes if you're ready to proceed. Like it, like it, love it, love it. All right, so these are some really quick tips for you to get the most out of these trainings, right? So uh, what you're gonna be seeing, make sure you take screenshots, right? So you're gonna see how many present, take as many screenshots as you can, take notes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Jaime, are you open to giving away your slides? I am open. Okay, so here's how you can get Jaime slides, right? If you're going to have to stay during the whole class. And towards the end, what you're going to do is you're going to email Jaime some feedback on the class, the presentation, right? And then he'll send you over the slides. So that's how it works. Uh, um, that's how you get the slides. A lot of times people ask for slides and it's a sensitive topic because these are pe this is people's intellectual property. So thankfully, Jaime said yes. But in order for you to get those slides, you're going to have to leave him some feedback. All right? Is that is that OK? Type yes in the chat if we understand if we're all on the same accord in that regard. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate you all. So here is, um, this is a quote that I like to bring up for people so you can understand the importance of making sure you're engaged and involved, right? And it's attributed to Benjamin Franklin, right? It goes this, tell me I forget, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And the whole reason why I like to bring up that quote is because the best way that you're going to learn is by being involved, taking action and doing, right? I've, I've developed a personality about implementation and just doing right and that's the basis right learn what you can learn but also get out there implement and do right and one of the ways that you start that implementation and start doing is being involved and engaged in this class right now so make sure you interact with the instructors right make sure you interact with Jaime ask questions be involved the more you're involved the more you will learn right absolutely all right. And so I have a uh, right now, my book is like on Amazon for free. I'll share a link to that in the chat in a little bit for anybody that's interested. It's a book on you can learn marketing for your real estate business. Next, these are some social media stats. So remember, I said take screenshots this. It would be wise for you to take a screenshot or a picture of this particular slide. These are some stats that emphasize why you should use social media in your business. And then of all of these stats, right, we have four in total. This is my favorite one that I like to mention. Social media is the top lead generation tool for realtors, right? So realtors that use social media, they do um, the percentages are on the other one, but they do more business than those without social media. So that's why you should be using social media. And yes, I'll go back a slide for you. Scott, there you go. Take a picture of that. And then I have one more slide that I want you to all that's relevant to you. And then we're going to turn it over to Jaime. So these are some video marketing stats. Make sure you take a screenshot of this. I'm not going to read them all out, but the next slide I'll, I'll read because it's more relevant to us. Right. But these are stats that are relevant to this class. Right. You're always going to hear me talk about social media, video, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, why, why, why? Well, these are some stats that prove why you should be using video, why you should be using social media. These are the whys, right? For anybody that's wondering. And this is my favorite slide on why you should use video, right? So we're all real estate professionals, right? Real estate agents. 85% of buyers and sellers prefer video, but guess how many agents use video? Less than 40%, right? So keep that in mind when you're learning these things today, right? If you want to separate yourself, you want to stand out, you want to attract more buyers and sellers, you need to be implementing video into your business. All right. So really quickly, just again, so you can see how our class and our structure works. This is the schedule here, right? It's a rotating schedule. One, two, three, four. We're now on week four and Jaime is going to teach you about YouTube. Again, Jaime is a YouTuber himself, right? And he has, I don't know, a ton of views, but that's not what's important, right? What's even more important to you is that Jaime teaches people these things, these very simple concepts that you're going to learn today. He teaches you how you can also implement it into your business. So sit back, enjoy, and learn how to use YouTube for your business. Jaime, the floor is yours. I appreciate it, Jerome. Thank you so much for the introduction you're and welcome. also for the invitation to to be a part of this. I enjoy our Thursdays that um the fourth Thursdays that I get to come through and share a little bit about 
YouTube and not only what it's done for my personal business, but what it's done for a lot of the agents that actually take action. So I like that quote. I'd never heard it before, Jerome, the whole involve me and, and I'll learn. So that is a big part of our presentation today, the um, getting involved and getting engaged, but more importantly, having something actionable to take away from our time together. So that's the way that I pr prepare all of my presentations. I am not the very, uh, I'm not the guy that's all abstract or theory. I want to give you as much practical and tactical information that you can immediately apply in your business. So regardless of where you are on YouTube or your relationship with YouTube at the moment, you're going to be able to take something away from here. I guarantee that. Just so we know who is in the audience and who's in the room right now in your relation to YouTube, let me ask you a quick question and just drop it in the chat. No need to unmute for now. We'll get to the Q&A here shortly. How many videos have you published on YouTube in the last 30 days? How many videos have you published on YouTube in the last 30 days? Zero, 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 four, zero, 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 two shorts, three, five. Awesome. So keep them coming. I want to see kind of where the entire room is at. So then we can, um, so then we can adjust as we get going, which, um, we're going to get going right now. First off to build the case for you. And it's going to be very, very quick. Um, it simply by you being here, you at least have the hunch and understanding that YouTube can have a sizable role in your business. So I do need to honor why YouTube for a quick second, we're going to get into the equipment immediately after that because that is one of the big reasons that a lot of us don't start we don't have an entry point and we immediately go to i don't have the money i don't have the time i don't have the equipment i don't know where to start right so that's um immediately where we're going to go and then we're going to look at the youtube workflow on the youtube workflow this is really where a lot of the a lot of the participants a lot of the attendees find the most value because we actually structure your workflow so you don't get lost so you can get videos out there on mass and you continue building that repetition or be more consistent so with youtube it's not like facebook ads or instagram ads where the moment that you launch an ad if it's successful you're going to see success quickly if it's not successful then you're not going to see anything <laughs> with youtube there's a little bit more to it there's a little bit more patience involved with youtube but at the end of the day if you know where to go and the videos to make you're going to find a lot more success much quicker so we're going to go through the youtube workflow and also i'm going to share with you how to optimize your videos so you can accelerate that growth on youtube our north star and i'll say this probably 20 times in our in our time together our north star is getting buyers or getting sellers that's it you're going to see some other opportunities that YouTube can yield you in terms of uh, additional revenue streams and additional benefits. But at the end of the day, what I'm more interested in is you seeing success on YouTube in the form of buyers to work with and sellers to work with. That's the win. That's the value proposition. That's the value that I'm going to bring to you today. So let's go. All right. So. I used to have about three or four slides really building the case on why YouTube, but I have since cut that out and I'm just going to share with you the case study here. The channel that you're looking at at the moment, his channel is Ola Franco. So if you look at the middle of the screen is the name of his channel, H-O-L-A space Franco. So if you are on YouTube right now, or if you're on your mobile, check out Ola Franco. That's the channel that we're referencing right now. His channel was launched February 5th of 2021. So a little bit over a year ago. And in that span, he has about 3 million views since then until now. So I just logged in at his, uh, logged in to check out his analytics and he's got over 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. And all of that is awesome. All of that is great. But what you're seeing on the screen right now is what that means in terms of your North Star, which is getting buyers, getting sellers, getting people to work with. So right now he's averaging over 20 appointments per week, and that is with names, emails, phone numbers, budget, and timeline. All of those five things we asked for, averaging over eight transactions per month. He has a nationwide referral system at the moment, and he has a growing real estate group. So this is going to help you understand a, a few different things. Number one, 
one of the big pushbacks that comes uh, that comes up often is is it too late no it's not too late i just give you a very recent case study and every single week moving forward or every single month moving forward i'll try to add another case study of all the different channels that we've launched so you can see different different um i guess momentum different case studies because it's not just one there are countless of success stories when it comes to youtube and this is one that my only claim to fame here is that i actually came up with this channel name hola franco the rest of it was his <laughs> the rest of it was the hard work and everything else so we would he would check in every single week and we would have our our coaching call but outside of that he's the one that put in the reps he's the one on the other side of the camera he's the one that built a very lucrative business so i just want to show you what's possible because it's happening day in and day out so this is what is out there for you this is something that is absolutely happening right now so we're going to go to the next slide i'm going to show you or really illustrate why this works all together well with youtube there's over 2 billion monthly users to put that in perspective that's twice the size of instagram so how many times have we gone to social media classes and not that there's anything wrong with going to social media classes, but how many times have we gone to those social media classes and try to figure out the perfect hashtags, right? How many times have we tried to get that perfect image out there and try to get as much engagement with that certain image or video on Instagram? Again, there's nothing wrong with Instagram. What I'm illustrating here is that there's a platform out there that has higher engagement, that has higher loyalty and has higher potential just from the way that it operates, because Jerome even mentioned it earlier about the importance of video, there's a platform out there that is twice the size of Instagram and brings you another level of client. So the reason that YouTube works so well is because obviously the traffic is there, but number two, it's a one and done model. Meaning the moment that you upload your video onto YouTube, and we'll talk about how to create a video here shortly, the moment that you upload your video onto YouTube, you go on to the next one, you're done with that video. And then the next week you upload again, and then the next week you upload again, and so on and so forth. So you have, you're amassing this library of content that is there for you. It's an asset that continues to grow with time and age with time, get more views, get more subscribers, get more clients. Right, so really what we need to understand here is for you cold callers out there, for you door knockers out there, for you that are actively prospecting, keep doing that, but also recognize that there's another way where the moment that you stop cold calling, the moment that you stop door knocking is a moment that you're not getting business any, any longer. With YouTube, it's the complete opposite. The moment that you upload a video, it's going to start working for you. That's when your work is done and YouTube takes over. So you, your whole challenge then becomes how many videos can I upload on this platform and be found? Right. So let me know. Let me know in the chat if that is making sense, if that is resonating with anybody out there. That's a big component to YouTube. The moment that you upload it's a one and done model, you get one video done, you upload it and you go on to the next one and go on to the next one. Now, what's super incredible about the platform altogether is that it's absolutely free. We're not talking about YouTube ads. The numbers that I showed you here earlier, this was all organic. We ran zero ads. We have not run ads at all. And this is all organic. So these are a lot of, a lot of the growth had to do with the consistency, but also the videos that we selected to launch on his YouTube channel. Now, when it comes to YouTube, you don't have to pay YouTube anything to upload a video. You don't have to pay YouTube anything to create a YouTube channel. Everything is absolutely free. The only thing that it takes is for you to put in a little bit of effort, learn the skill and then apply it in your business. Now, I think um, Jerome also mentioned a, a pretty impactful statistic about video. The one that I, I found out there was that over 80% of the content that's being consumed right now on the internet is in the form of video. This means that if you haven't published a video, and this goes beyond YouTube, but I just want to illustrate the power of, of video. If you haven't published a video in the last seven days, you've missed 80% of the traffic. You've missed 80% of the audience. Because right now the content is being consumed in the form of video. 
Now, again, this goes beyond YouTube, but we really need to understand the impact of video on Instagram, on Facebook slash Meta, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on email, text, and so on and so forth. So video is here to stay. We need to continue to grow. Julie, Julie, please mute. Julie. Yes. Please mute your device. I'm trying. All good. Thank you. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So why YouTube works, I mean, these are just four bullet points. We can continue going, but I, I really want to get into the actual substance of our, of our time together. When it comes to equipment, all you need is your phone. One of the biggest challenges, including with myself, was as soon as I wanted to dive into this world of video, dive into this world of YouTube, I immediately went out and purchased a very expensive camera that I just really didn't have a need for at that time because I didn't know how to work it. I didn't know anything about lenses. I didn't know anything about apertures. I didn't know anything about anything. <laughs> so it was a big waste of, let me, it wasn't a waste of money because I ended up using it at the end, but that is not the entry point. So you're real estate professionals first. Let's, let's get that clear. So some of you have experience with devices or technology or audio lighting video. You have experience in that world, but many of us do not. I include myself in that world because I just don't have all this technical acuity when it comes to audio with lighting or, or with video. Your entry point is your phone. Period. Regardless if you have an iPhone, regardless if you have an Android or any other device out there that was created in the last five years, you are good to go. So you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money getting started here. You already have everything that you need in your pocket, most likely. Now, once you get going, once you start making videos, once you understand the cadence of making a video, once you understand editing, once you understand storytelling, once you get that rhythm and get going, then we can start making some investments in your, in your business or in your video making business, which the first investment is going to be in your audio. So your audience, the people that are watching you on YouTube, they're going to forgive you for a blurry image. They're going to forgive you even if they can't see you, if your lighting is completely off, but they're not going to forgive you if they can't hear you. They're not going to forgive you if it just sounds like this the entire time. They're just not going to forgive you. So that's going to be the first improvement that we make. So once you get some videos under your, your belt and are ready to make an investment, your next upgrade is going to be in your audio. So you, the very first purchase you're going to make is in a lapel mic. So a, a mic that clips onto your, to your shirt that gets close to your mouth so you can get better audio. That's going to be your first investment. And then with time, then yes, you can start investing in a microphone that's $100, $300, $500, whatever your budget allows, that's where you go. But a lapel mic is going to be $25 investment and your return on investment is going to be so drastic just with that one purchase. Once you're good with your audio or have improved your audio, then we're going to improve our lighting. So this gives the audience that familiarity to your videos, that sense that once they click on your thumbnail, they know what to expect. It's going to be the same lighting. It's going to be the same style, the same mood. There's that famili familiarity to your content that's going to bring people back. So if they come back to one of your videos and one day it's just completely pitch black, the next day it's orange, the next day it's red, and the next day it's whatever, then that's going to throw people off. And I say that from personal experience because that was me. I thought that I was providing some a different look, but I was just turning people off. So with lighting, lighting is something that is very simple to fix. It's a $50 investment. If that there's different types of lighting, you can go on YouTube and figure out what lighting solution is best for you. We don't have time to cover that extensively in our time today, but that's going to be your next investment. That's going to be the highest return on investment that you can make for your video making. And then lastly, you're going to go into your video. That's when you can actually go and purchase a camera or a webcam or something that's going to give you a better visual than what you have on your phone. Although if you never make 
a purchase of a camera, if you never purchase a camera or a webcam, trust me, your phone is going to be more than enough. The way that your phone takes video right now is out of this world. It's just incredible that you never ever have to make that investment. But I want to give you the hierarchy of upgrades because at some point, some of you will want to take video to that next level. Some of you want to see that blurry image on the background. Some of you want to really model those creators that went before you and the creators that you personally look up to. So when it comes to equipment, long story short, your phone is where you start. Then you level up with audio. Your next, your next investment is going to be lighting. And then finally with video. And if you're looking for specific brands, specific models, specific uh, types of equipment, all of that can be found and much better explained than myself because I'm very ignorant when it comes to this type of information that can be found on YouTube, right? So that is a great opportunity for you to, to learn that and invest in your business. All right, so as we as we continue going, make sure that you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. So at, by the time that we um, we get there towards the end, you have a, um, I don't want you to forget your question. So we have, we can honor that question once we wrap up. So if you have any questions, please feel free to start dropping them in the chat. Now, what I want you to realize as you're editing, as you're recording, as you're scripting, as you're growing your presence and building your channel, I want you to realize a few things of what you're actually doing with your YouTube channel. Because it's very easy to get deflated. It's very easy to get frustrated. It's very easy to quit when you start building your YouTube channel because starting out, it's going to be a tough road to hoe. It's going to be a tough one to get, get launched. It's not going to, you're not going to, most of you will not go viral. I haven't gone by or I'm not, not projecting this on you. It's just the reality. Don't expect that I'm going to make one video and it's going to get a million views and life's going to be perfect because it's not right. But we really need, need to understand what we're building. Well, number one, you have an asset that you can control now, which is your YouTube channel. And this is vastly different than let's just say if you're purchasing Zillow leads right now, well, the moment that you don't make the payment to Zillow is the moment that you stop getting leads. Is that fair? Right. The moment that you stop making payment to any lead, uh, lead, um, lead service provider is the moment that you stop getting business. Well, with YouTube, that's a little bit different with YouTube. You can stop uploading today and you're still going to get views tomorrow. You're still going to get clients reaching out to you next week. You're still going to get people reaching out to you years after the fact. So that's something that we really need to be mindful of. Number two, YouTube helps you generate clients passively. You don't have to be there physically pressing play or speaking to one on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. This isn't Zoom. For Zoom to work is you have to schedule with somebody else and you have to go on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with them. This is not that. This allows you to bring clients in passively. So while you're at appointments, while you're showing homes while you are sleeping, while you're vacationing, while you're doing X, Y, and Z, clients are watching you, are building relationships with you, going to that third point and reaching out to you. You're able to build relationships at scale. This is an unbelievable platform that is again, free and allows you to build multiple relationships at once and allows you to do that at scale. So that's incredible. And the fourth point is, you're creating content that is usable and shareable. Now, this is one of the, we've become memes as real estate agents where we, um, we're out there posting content saying that I'm the top producer in the office, that I'm the, this, that, or the other as a real estate agent. Well, outside of it, feeding your ego and celebrating your own ego. When's the last time that one of your clients shared that shared your content saying that, Hey, this is the agent that I used. He's the top producer in his office. When's the last time they shared that content? Right? I mean, it's, unless it's your family, <laughs> unless it's somebody that is absolutely, um, a family member to you, they're not going to share that content. But if you share content, if you create content that actually helps people, if you create a video and share 
the three things that you need to look out for in the 2022 real estate market that's a shareable content that is usable content that is content that even people that don't know you would be willingly would be willingly able to share or i said that weird are, are will willingly share right so if we're out there creating actual content that is usable and that's shareable people will take that opportunity to champion you because it's about helping other people it's not about celebrating oh Jaime sold 50 homes this month. Well, nobody cares. Um, somebody put in the chat, Snapchat, top 1% on social media. Uh, there you go, right? So who's out there sharing that? Well, kudos to Snapchat because they know that we um, we like to hear more, more of ourselves um, and share more of our uh, quote unquote accomplishments that are manufactured. Well, anyway, I'll stop, I'll stop, stop. But yes, yeah, Snapchat is a perfect example where you're sharing information that just feeds one's ego rather than provides value. And then the additional income, I cut out these slides at the beginning because I wanted to get to the meat and potatoes as soon as possible, but that channel that I highlighted earlier with Ola Franco, this year he's gonna get hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, I, I, and that's plural, hundreds of thousands of dollars in AdSense. I'll say that again. Ola Franco, that channel is going to receive hundreds of thousands of dollars from YouTube AdSense, meaning that YouTube is paying him for his content. That is an additional income source that is awesome. It's great. It's nice gravy on top. But at the end of the day, he's going to make more money from the real estate sales. And that's what our North Star is. We're not forgetting that for a second. We need buyers. We need sellers. That's who our avatar is. That's why we're on YouTube. This isn't a hobby. This is a business. It just so happens that with the YouTube platform, we get that additional bonus of YouTube paying us. If we meet certain criteria, we won't get into what you need at the moment. Unless, unless you're curious about that, you can make money off of affiliate sales. So kind of like referrals, you can get sponsorships for your videos and you gain access that you never had before access to business opportunities, access to clients that at one point were quote unquote untouchable in terms of you couldn't get by the gatekeeper. Well, the moment that you're building an audience on YouTube is the moment that you get a entry ticket into a lot of opportunities that at once just weren't there for you. So it's additional income that you don't have to count on this income. It's just a nice, it's just a nice bonus because you're going to be getting so many buyers and so many sellers along the way anyway. All right. So the YouTube workflow. This is where we're going to spend the most amount of time today. Our workflow is one that's going to allow us to structure how we make our videos. Regardless if you make a video for YouTube, for social media, for a commercial, regardless if, if regardless if you're making a video for Hollywood or for a TV series, regardless of where your audience is or the type of video that you're making, the workflow is the same. You may not have called it this. It may not be known as this workflow, but at the end of the day, this is the exact workflow that is being used. And if you know how to utilize this particular workflow in your business, you're going to be able to systematically publish videos on time every single day or every single week, however many times you want to upload a video. So, Let's walk through it. The acronym that's going to help you under uh, remember the workflow is Boss Red, B O S R E D. So Boss Red, B O S R E D, and that's what you're seeing on the screen right now, left to right. I'm sorry, left down, and then you go over to the second column. So first, you're going to brainstorm. You're going to brainstorm different topics. You're going to brainstorm different videos that you want to bring to production. So brainstorming takes no more than 10 minutes. You can come up with 20 video ideas. What's the home, what's the option period? What's the difference between option and earnest? Is now the right time? Is now the, is not, now the right time to buy? Is now the right time to sell? What's the real estate market going to do in 2022? Um, what are the, what are the top neighborhoods in a certain city? These are all ideas that you can brainstorm in less than 10 minutes. Again, it won't take you lo longer than 10 minutes to come up with 20 different topics to cover. 
right? So in your brainstorm phase, in your in your brainstorm, in your in your brainstorm um, sitting, you can easily come up with 20 ideas. Now, once you move over to the second to the second phase, the O, the optimized phase. So remember, boss red brainstorm, optimize script, record, edit, and distribute. When you go to the optimized stage, that's where you take those 20 ideas and you optimize them. That's where you figure out, is this truly going to be a video that I want to make? Is this a video that is going to bring me any business? So in the optimized stage, you're answering for three things, which you'll see in the next slide what they are, but you're answering for the traffic, meaning is there demand? You're answering for the thumbnail, which is that that the thumbnail is that when you're scrolling on YouTube, that first thing that you see on the videos where you're typically going to see somebody with an expressive face, or you're going to see a house, or you're going to see something that will give you a clue as to what that video is about. So think of it as your, think of it as a billboard for the video. So you're going to need to answer for the thumbnail. What does it need to look like? And then you're also going to need to answer for the title. What am I going to title this video? Can I clearly articulate in a title what the payoff is going to be in this video? And you're going to see another slide here shortly where I break that down further, but I just want you to understand the entire workflow. First, you're brainstorming 20 different ideas. Second, you're going to answer for the traffic, the thumbnail and the title at the optimized stage. Well, once you bring 20 ideas into the optimized stage, chances are you're going to find that some of those ideas suck. You're going to find, you know what? There's no traffic here. Nobody outside of me and my cousin that asked me that question cares about this topic. I'm not going to make that video. You're going to find that, you know, this option and earnest distinction, you know, I thought that they would make sense by themselves, but you know what? I probably should combine these two topics and create one video from them. So you're going to find that those 20 ideas get condensed down to five workable videos, right? So once you have your five workable videos, you're going to go over to scripting. So you're going to move it into the scripting phase where you, if you want to write down everything word for word, script it out as if you're going to read it from a teleprompter, because chances are you will. Great. That is you. If, if it, if it allow you make that, if it will allow you to make that video, then do it that way. But know that you don't have to write everything out word for word because that takes some time. You can just create bullet points. This presentation is a bullet point type of a video where I just have words on the screen as visual cues because I know generally what I want to cover within these bullet points. Same thing for your video production. So that's where you go to script. After you script out your five videos, notice that we're taking several videos through this process and we're taking it over to that next phase. The reason that we're doing that is, well, the concept is called batching. You're batching your video production, but the reason that we're batching it all together is because it will allow you to take multiple videos through the workflow and it will allow you to make better videos and more of them at the same time, right? So once we get into the record phase, we are recording all of this either in the morning or in the afternoon or whenever you record, but the goal is to record as many of them as possible within one time frame, within one city. The reason we're doing that is because some of you may have a space that you can dedicate your equipment to, to be there. You, you might have a, an office or a studio or a workspace that you call yours, but there's some of you that don't. There's some of you that have to set up your camera. You have to set up your lighting. You have to set your microphone up. You have to set everything up and pray that your kids don't come in and barge in while you're recording or pray that X, Y, and Z doesn't happen and you're able to get the video out in time, right? So setting everything up once just for one video is not worth your time. Now, if it's necessary, then awesome, but I'm showing you another way. I'm showing you a way where you can have everything prepared. You already know the video that you're going to make. You are, you've already optimized it. You are, you already know what you're going to say. So now you can sit down for five hours and bust out however many videos you can bust out. Right? So I'm just giving you this batching system that has allowed me to make videos just, I mean, incredibly fast and substantially better. 
there's a time frame from 2019 to 2020, 21, where I was making a video per day. And it's this system right here that allowed me to produce over 750 videos daily. Now I didn't make all of those videos in one day. I made 10 videos at a time and I would drip them out on YouTube as if it was daily. So this system works and under this system, I was able to get two weeks ahead, three weeks ahead in some cases, right? So I just want to show you a different way to make your videos because once you get the system down, you're not going to fall behind ever. So once you have your, all your videos recorded, then you're going to go over to editing so you can edit your videos yourself or really one of the best investments that you can make in this venture is in somebody else editing. Right. So chances are, unless you're a professional Hollywood editor or uh, a, a professional editor altogether and enjoy that stuff, chances are you're going to farm that out. You're going to find somebody else to edit for you. And I encourage you to take that investment. Now, a editor is going to cost you anywhere from $30 to $100 per video, depending on the complexity of the video. Right. So some of you may be thinking, well, I don't have $50 to invest in a video. I would, the, what I, what I say in response to that is, well, how much do you value your time? Cause if it's going to take you five hours to edit that video, then you just quote unquote paid yourself $10 an hour. You're a real estate professional that makes substantially more per hour. Act like it. And I know that sounds a bit hard, hard to hard to hear, but we need to, we were business owners. We need to analyze what is worth doing and what is worth handing off. Editing is one of those things that at once I was, I was editing all my videos myself, but I don't even have an editing system. Well, I'm lying. I do have the editing thing, but I don't have the, um, I don't have the upgraded version anymore. <laughs> so I am forcing myself not to know any of the updates or do any of the updates on my Final Cut Pro because when you purchase Final Cut Pro, it's there forever. Now, if I had Premiere, which is a monthly subscription, I would let go of that subscription. But with Final Cut, it's a one and done, meaning you pay it once and you have it forever. But I haven't had, needed to edit in years at this point. Anyway, let's keep going because I could go on the editing phase for a while. Uh, sorry, click that too early. Distribute. Distribute means uploading the video. Distribute means putting it on YouTube, putting it on your TikTok if it's less than three minutes or clipping a portion of the video and uploading it to TikTok. Distributing means putting it on LinkedIn, putting it on Facebook slash Meta, putting it on Instagram, distributing it out to the world. Because remember, you've created an asset, you've created a video, you've created a video asset, some actual content that you can now repurpose in different places. You can send it out in your email newsletter. You can text it out to your clients. Hey, I just made this video on what I think the, what I think is going to happen in the real estate market this year, in case you were wondering, and then just send them the link, right? So you have content. You don't have to, you don't have to get Inman's articles. You don't have to get NARS articles or videos. You don't, you don't have to go to Zillow to get their opinion. You can create your own and distribute it. You're a media company at this point. So just give me a different, give me a different lens to look through. Optimization, we touched on it briefly, but here in summary, understand a, a couple of things. In the optimization phase, so remember, brainstorm, optimize, script, record, edit, and distribute. So it's that second phase. We're looking at the traffic, meaning what's the demand? We're looking at the thumbnail. What value can you, um, we're looking at the value or sharing the value on the thumbnail, on the, on the billboard, the digital billboard, so people can stop scrolling. And then on the title, what's the payoff? What is this video about? So in the optimized stage, as you bring in all of your ideas, you're looking to see, is there enough demand here that warrants me making this video? Is there enough traffic? So remember that the three T's at the optimization stage, traffic, thumbnail, title. So in the traffic, you're, you're answering the demand. You're answering, is there enough traffic here on the thumbnail? you are visualizing and in many cases creating or farming that out as well. A thumbnail is going to cost you anywhere from $5 to $25 to have a really good one done. 
which is not that expensive at all. The thumbnail is going to be a reason that people stop scrolling on their YouTube app, right? So you yourselves, you consumers of YouTube, you are you you yourself know that if a thumbnail looks a little bit sus, you're not going to click on it. There's not enough intrigue in there. There's not enough curiosity. There's no value in you clicking or perceived value in you stopping on that on that particular video and clicking on it. And then the, the title, what you need to know is or illustrate is what's the payoff? What can you expect once you click through on the video? All right, so this one, we're gonna actually need to cut it at this particular screen to allow enough time for questions. I wanna make sure that, that you look at the video structure because one of the questions that comes up is, well, what does it need to look like? Well, I'm sorry, what, what do I need to say in these videos? I can't give you the word by words on what you wanna say because every personality is different, every opinion is different, but I, what I can give you is the structure of what your videos, what successful videos look like. Right, so you're the one that's, you're in charge of putting in the content and what you're going to say, but this structure is a great structure that works on YouTube that will keep people on your YouTube video and will keep them engaged. So the first stage is the hook. So this is where you're offering something almost unbelievable. <laughs> we're not trying to, we're not trying to make claims, if you will, but you're trying to hook somebody into your video. You're giving a, a reason to, watch that video because remember where that user is coming from they logged into their youtube app and they were typing in how to buy a house in texas as an example because that's where i'm at well once they saw the thumbnail they they saw enough interest in in that thumbnail it was interesting enough so it caught their attention they they read the title and it said how to buy a house in texas and they're thinking fantastic this is what i need well when they click through what are they going to be met with, right? That's where you provide your hook. You're giving people, you're validating their decision of them. You're validating their decision of clicking on that video. So that's where you provide a powerful hook, a reason for them to stay in that video. And then you go into a brief intro. Just who you are is more than enough. Don't get into a 30 second commercial about yourself and all the awards that you made and the brokerage that you're with and your phone number and your email and everything that they need to do. And, they need to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm Jaime Resendez with the HP Realty. My phone number is 940, blah, blah, blah. My email is this, go check out my website and also go and check out this other thing that I did back in, no. Like, hey, this is Jaime Resendez bringing you actionable real estate data or whatever it is that you do, right? And then get into it. So the next stage, so again, this is a structure. You're the one that is gonna be inputting the content. You're going to, you're going to tease the ending. You're going to tease the end, meaning you're going to encourage somebody to stay to the very end. So that can be done in multiple ways. You can offer something at the very end of the video. You can say that, Hey, make sure that you stay to the end because that fifth point that I'm going to cover today is in reality is probably going to be the most important for you. If you are finding yourself looking for real estate today, you know, you're teasing out the ending. And then you immediately jump into the content, whatever you're going to say, whether if you're talking about how to buy a house, get into it, get into the content as quickly as possible. There's really no more time for delay back in the day, back th two years ago, five years ago, you had a, a bit of time. You had some time to do this fancy B roll, this fancy transition, this almost commercial style, but that's no longer the case. People want the information that they click for. So give it to them. And then you deliver on the tease. So if you promise the most epic payoff in the history of ever, then deliver on it and then do a very brief outro and get out of that video. Now, the best way to illustrate this, the best way for you to start seeing it is for you to go in, into other channels out there and start watching other videos and see how they, how they lead into their videos, see, their cadence, really get a good sense of how they make their videos. So some of the best content creators in the real estate lens right now are Christina Smallhorn. She's gonna hit 200,000 subscribers here probably next month. She's going, just she's growing so rapidly. Um, so she's somebody that absolutely model 
And in fact, quick plug here, we're, we're going to have a summit with her on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. So if you're interested in checking that out, just let me know. I'm on Workplace. But she's going to be sharing with you how to actually, you know, how to actually grow your YouTube channel. And we have Scott affirming that, Christina Rocks. Another great creator out there is Javier Vidania. Javier is a very close friend. He's got over 130,000 subscribers. I don't know how many subscribers he's got now, but he gets millions and millions of views and is working a very similar structure to what you're seeing here. All right, so this is a structure. This is one that you're gonna wanna go back to and check out. At the end of the day, when you're looking at what video should I make next, ask yourself, how close is the viewer from calling me? How close is the viewer from calling me? If you ask yourself this question, when you are determining which video to make next, it's gonna allow you to almost predict how many leads you're gonna generate from that video. Because if you're making a video that has nothing to do with them looking for a house right now, or has nothing to do for them looking for a real estate agent right now, has nothing to do with real estate altogether, don't count on getting business from it. So to illustrate the point, an example would be, um, if you put in a video that spoke to real estate agents as an example, like here's the three things that every real estate agent should know. Well, one, you're not talking to home buyers, you're not talking to home sellers. So that video has no purpose on your YouTube channel if you are trying to get buyers or trying to get sellers. If you're trying to get homeowners slash home sellers, if those are the leads that you're trying to get, then you shouldn't be making videos that talk about the five most important things when uh, the five most important things to improve your credit score. You shouldn't make that video if your target is home sellers, actual homeowners, right? So how close is a viewer from calling me? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. So if you're looking for low hanging fruit videos, you can make a video about the quality, qualities of top real estate agents. Somebody that would watch that video is probably has an interest in finding a real estate agent. No. Best neighborhoods in Dallas, Texas. Somebody that's watching that video probably has an interest in Dallas, Texas. Moving to Dallas, Texas. Here's what you need to know. Somebody that's watching that video, chances are they are moving to Dallas, Texas. Right? So just ask yourself, ask yourself this question over and over again, and it'll give you the, the lineup that give you the videos that you need to make. So you can actually start seeing success sooner rather than later. And then the checklist, since, um, for those of you that are interested, as Jerome mentioned, you can, um, you can just email me, give me a little bit of feedback on the presentation today and either take a screenshot of this right here, or you can have it in the presentation, I'm sorry, in the presentation that I share with you here um, after that. But there's a little checklist that I like giving as much actionable items to you. So I'll give you a couple more seconds for you to take a screen grab of that. Or if you want to just wait till I send you the presentation, but just email me at, um, well, you know how to get my email, but actually I'll share my preferred one. Feel free to email me. Give me some feedback on the presentation today because we use that feedback to adjust it. And this way you have the presentation. Now, if you want the full breakdown of me screen sharing how to create a YouTube channel, how to actually get started with YouTube and how to upload a video, how to optimize for video, something that would go beyond what we talked about today, something that is much more hands on, then use your phone and take a little um, use that QR code to go to a live stream that I did this Sunday where I went in for about two and a half hours and did a complete screen share on how to set up your YouTube channel, how to optimize it so you get leads and do all that fun stuff. So if you want the full breakdown screen share step by step, that's where to go. All right, what questions do we have? I do have a heart out in about five minutes. So um let's see so is it necessary I'll, to do the video go ahead go ahead because i was uh so here somebody asked about like daily video and i was just going to ask you to emphasize the importance of batching because it's the same 
idea. Correct. So it's not necessary to do daily video. If you can commit to making one video or publishing one video a week, then commit to it and just be consistent. If you can do two videos a week, which is where I would love everybody to be at, great. But I understand that this is your business, this is your timeline, this is your belief in YouTube that you have to work through. So that's not a decision for, for Jerome or I to make, but if you use the batching system, it will allow you to make more videos and better videos. I made daily videos because that's really the priority that I gave YouTube and I wanted to get as much content out there as possible. But if you're a one video per week person, great. I'd much rather you be a one video per week person and go an entire year than for you to get 52 videos out consecutively and then get burnt out and give up. I'd much rather you be the first person or that first agent. Hi, May. Um, so one of the things in, in one of your previous classes you taught us, uh, you, you made a comment. You was like, I'm not that great at storytelling. And from my observation, you've gotten better at storytelling. So uh, could you tell us about that process or any recommendations that you have in regards to storytelling? Mm, well, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. I, I didn't notice that I got better drum. I appreciate that. <laughs> At the end of the day, people, when they go and watch your content, if you keep it super factual, you're going to get an audience. People, people are, people will still watch, but if you can bring people into that video, bring people into that journey, bring people into, into your world and you into theirs, you're going to have lifelong followers that will without a question, reach out to you, right? So this is, although you still have time on YouTube, you can absolutely deploy this in your strategy. This is something that is not going away anytime soon, but the YouTube of three years ago is not here any longer. Back in back three years ago, you didn't have to be good. You just had to be there. So when you're first to market, you don't have to be good now that's a little bit different now i don't want to intimidate anybody because there's plenty of agents that get on youtube and and really work on it so i'll give you an example or i'll give you a case study that i'll probably include next next time we go through this john zakan here out of dallas fort worth area he, she started her youtube channel and i think it's called living in dallas texas she's got thousands and thousands of views now and within her first month this is about two months ago is when she started within her first month she's already working with five clients absolutely possible and again i don't want to intimidate anybody into not getting started but you do have to put some effort into this and that's why kudos to you for being in, in class classes like this that are put on by exp that are hosted by jerome and the information that you're seeing here is real life stuff that's working right now. So either you accept it and implement or just dismiss it and continue doing what you're doing and having the same results. And they could be stellar. I'm not saying that you're not having results now, but you can continue the status quo. Hi, May. Hey, I know you got to go at three. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. It's 2.59. I'll let you go so you can hit your three o'clock. Um, we we have some questions in the chat. Me and uh, somebody asked about creating a thumbnail. Somebody asked about three different YouTubes. Uh, check out Jaime on YouTube. He answers a lot of those questions and he'll walk you through some of that stuff. Uh, just reach out to him on YouTube. He'll take care of you. So uh, scan that uh, QR code for to go to his live stream and his channel, whatever. Jaime has plenty of you, plenty of content on YouTube. He also has a course available that you could probably access. So just check that out. Anybody else, anybody have any other questions before we go? Yeah, did the same principles hold for YouTube shorts? Not really, um, but YouTube shorts is just different. It, it, it's different. There are some principles there. It, it's, it's a little bit complicated and it's like not enough to answer in less than a minute. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a quick question. Do you use the uh, Google AdWords tool in the optimization? 
in what uh, optimization? Uh, when you start looking up as far as like which which uh, topics will be your best return. I use a combination of things. I do use Google AdWords sometimes, but I have I just use like a combination of things over my years. Uh, one of my favorites right now, uh, Judy knows about what is it? Uh, she's not here. Uh, what is it? Uber suggest is what I like to use for like keyword research and what you're talking about. But I use a combination of all of I don't have like one particular preference. Uh, TubeBuddy and VidIQ are two other good ones. There are so many tools. They all offer similar things and they all got their different quirks or whatever. So those are some of my recommendations. Overall SEO research, I, I use Ubersuggest. When I'm going to get really YouTube specific, I've been using TubeBuddy. I've seen some people vouch for VidIQ as well. Also, the Google search works really well. We have another class called uh, Content creation frustration elimination where we show you how to come up with all your topics from um using this tool called answer the public and it pulls like all kinds of yeah, content that, that people one. are searching for uh so there are yeah. so many tools out there so much available i would just pick one and utilize it because they all work some way i mean what about auto publishing soft uh, software for youtube i don't have any experience don't with mess that. with it okay Uh, Jerry, that class is, we have not done that class in a while. I don't have an exact date for it, but if you reach out to me on Workplace, I think I have a recording around somewhere. I could probably send that to you. Uh, just reach out to me on Workplace. All right. Anybody else have any questions before we get going? All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. If you want access to those slides, contact Jaime, send him that feedback, and he'll send those right over to you. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next week.